Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, so um, today I'll talk to you about um, superficial and subcutaneous mycosis. If you remember earlier, I have uh, explained uh, in detail about general mycology, fungal, fungal infections, their morphology and what infections they cause. Now we will go on to mycosis. Now, what is mycosis? Mycosis is that disease diseases caused by fungi. Now, superficial mycosis is something which we will talk about today, which mainly comprises tinea ringworm which are common infections, they affect skin, hair and nails and these are mostly caused by fungi which are specialized saprophytes that is they can digest keratin. Now, now most organisms cannot digest keratin so they cannot cause infection in intact skin but these fungi can cause infection in intact skin because they can digest keratin and invade. They can cause either surface infections or they could be cutaneous infections. Now, there is a basic difference between surface and uh, cutaneous infections which I want to uh, emphasize here. Since the surface infections are caused by fungi living on dead layers of the skin, there is no inflammatory response but they, because they do not come in contact with the inflammatory cells of the body. In contrast, the cutaneous infections, the fungi are in the cornified layers of skin, which means that they are coming in contact with the inflammatory response of the body and they are producing inflammatory response and the, these fungi can cause hypersensitivity. Now, the surface infections comprise mainly tinea versicola, tinea nigra, piedra white, piedra nigra while the cutaneous infections are mainly dermatophytosis and candida infection. Now, we will go into details of these, but before going into details, maybe I will try and we will see a few cases, you know, which might help you to understand as, how, as to how we come across these patients and how do we diagnose them. Now, there was a patient, a 17 year old boy who presented with discolored patches on skin, back, on the skin of back, arms and legs. Now, these patches, they were not causing any problem as such. They were just cosmetic problems that the patient noticed, but he saw that they were progressing. That is, they started over a small, a small area and they spread over the last few weeks. They were non-itching, there was no discharge. So, as such, there was no problem from the patches other than that there was a different color than the rest of the skin. Patient was fine otherwise with no other complaints and on general examination, it was noticed patient was malnourished with all system, all other systems NAD that is as such the patient had no problems. Now, how do we diagnose this? This what is this thought of? Basically, so how did the patient present when we did the examination? There were four white superficial patches seen on the back and other areas of the skin and they had sharp margins and they when you you know um, rub them with a slide or anything or with a hand also you will see dry white scales coming out of them. Now, these are non-inflammatory, non-itching that is the, there is no itching here and basically they are a cosmetic problem which the patient had. Now, what we did was when we exposed this area of the skin to a UV woods lamp, florist patches are appear that is these patches they florist. So, if this occurs this suggests that this is a fungal infection. Further what we can do is from these patches we take scrapings and we make microscopic preparation so that we can see under the microscope. And uh, you know this microscopic preparation like I told you earlier is mainly prepared in fungal cases from skin and nail and all in 10 percent KOH. Now, this 10 percent KOH is taken on a slide and this scale is or the fungal scraping is put on it and it is warmed a little bit and let it be for some time. Now, this KOH is a keratinolytic agent so it dissolves the skin cells and the fungal cells come out of the skin cells and they can be seen easily. That is the purpose or if you get a skin scraping or a biopsy sample you can do histopath staining, you can do pass staining and you can look for fungal strains. You could see something like this which is seen that is there are uh, yeast cells along with fungal hyphae which are seen which could be seen and they could tell you that yes this patient is suffering from fungal infection which was what was seen in this case. Culture is usually not attempted because this is enough to be able to tell us that this patient is having tinea infection. Culture is difficult also in most cases because it is a lipophilic fungus and usually it is not done, but microscopy and 
seeing under the microscope is what is important. Even serology does not play much role in these cases. So, what are these cases? What was this case diagnosed as? It was diagnosed as tinea versicolor, which is also known as pityriasis versicolor, tinea flava, dermatomycosis, liver spots, furfuracea. All these are synonymous names for all these. Now, basically, it is a superficial infection of horny layer of skin, which is caused by pityriosporum orbiculare. Now, these most, the most often the sites which are involved are chest, abdomen, thighs, back area which are involved and the patient comes mainly because of the cosmetic problem and because of these uh, patches increasing over the period of time. How do we treat these cases? We treat them by thorough scrubbing, putting mild fungicidal ointment which could be uh, sodium sulphide 20 percent plus mild sulphur ointment or some fungicidal um, preparation which is available. And also the patient needs to be careful that the clothes should be separate, they should not be mixed with other family members, they should be boiled, they should be, because it, was, it is easy to transmit from one family member to another. And the patient has to realize that he has to take this treatment for long, it might take weeks before he can get all right. So uh, not just uh, tinea versicolor, there are other kinds of superficial skin infections also which you might come across. Another one is tinea nigra. Now what is tinea nigra? It is again localized stratum corneum. But here you will get brown to black discoloration patches, which are usually seen in palms and hand and not seen on back and other areas. And the etiological agent in this case is Cladosporium vernicae, which is a fungus, which is a deeply pigmented fungus. And clinically, the patient will present with dark pigmented macules, which are there. They are again non scaling, sharply marginated, and usually they are not, they are asymptomatic. That is, there is no inflammation and no itching again. And when you do microscopy of these under 10 percent KOH, you will see brownish branched hyphae, septate hyphae are seen along with budding cells which are seen which is a very typical appearance. When you grow it on culture, that is we grow it on sabra dextrosega, we get brown to grey to black moist colony which is seen, which is a, again when you make grams of it, you will see that it is yeast cells in chains. So this kind of picture when it is seen along with brownish discolored patches and this kind of microscopy and culture, we diagnose it as tinea nigra and the treatment is similar to tinea versicolor. Another you know, superficial infection which is very important and very commonly seen in most of the skin uh, OPDs, 70 percent of skin OPDs come because of these cases, tinea and the piedra infections. Now piedra, it could be white piedra which is piedra alba or it is also known as Bejel's disease. Now this is a chronic disease of hair, of scalp, moustache beard etc. and it is characterized by grayish white nodules on the hair shaft which are adherent to the hair shaft. Now etiological agent in this case is trichosporon bigeli. When you see under the microscope, you will see these, these hair follicles, the hair uh, is infiltrated with the fungi in between the cells of the cuticle. Then when you see this is seen under the KOH micro, uh, preparation under the microscope and you can confirm that this is a fungal infection of the hair. Septate hyphae will be seen penetrating into the cuticle of the cells of the cuticle and also you might see arthrospores sometimes. Arthrospores are degenerating rectangular spores which you might see sometimes or you might not see. But if you see a uh, you know hyphae penetrating into the hair nodule and also having such nodules in the hair that suggests that it is piedra. And you do culture on uh, sabrodextrose agar, we get cream colored yeast like colonies which when we do microscopy, we see something like this. These are the arthrospores, which are the rectangular spores. You will see septate highline hyphae and you also might see blastospores. All these individually can be seen in microscopy and the treatment is mostly in these cases removal of these hair or shaving and topical agents to be applied like 5 percent salicylic acid, 1 percent iodine, imidazole derivatives, all these need to be applied and taken care of. Another Similar presentation could be black piedra. Now, white piedra was like the name suggested, they were grayish white nodules. While black piedra or piedra nigra, here the hair are, you know, they have dark brown or black nodules which are gritty and they are adherent to the one third of the hair. That is, they will surround the hair all around and they are dark brown, black, gritty nodules. Here, the etiological agent in this case is pedriae hotae, and usually this is localized to scalp infection small nodules 1 to 2 millimeter in diameter, the adherent to the hair could be seen and they enclose the hair in the sheet. Now when you do microscopy of these, again when you do microscopy, you will see peripheral hyphal strands or and you might see a central firm tissue black mass in between and hyphae around. 
when you do culture on the uh, sabrodextrose agar, we get black velvety colonies which are like these and when the microscopy is done, we get septate hyphae and we get thick walled chlamydospores, which is what is very typical of these infections and you can diagnose them on that basis and treatment is the same as Piedra Alba, which I told you that is shaving and application of the uh, imidazole derivatives. Now, this was something which was seen very often in uh, skin infection, in skin OPDs. Now, also there is another kind of infection which is very commonly seen in skin OPDs, which is again a superficial infection or it could be a cutaneous infection. One cannot come to know because the patient comes with complaints. Now, there is, see, we will discuss, discuss about this by considering this case history, which is a farmer who came to us with a long standing history. And he was a 50 year old farmer, he presented with dirty colored nails in hands and feet and these started as small white speckled or powder patches on the surface of the nail plate. But over the period of time they became roughened and the nails became darker and brittle and they were crumbling very easily. So, the nail was as if it was falling off. Some of them were breaking getting and getting lines, others were sinking into the skin and the skin became sore and retracting in these points where the nail was sinking into the skin. This was a very typical history which he gave and this had been this history he gave over the period of a few months, you know it started as on one nail and went on to the others. Now, what do we do in these cases with this since the history of worsening was given over last few months starting from one nail in foot and now spread over, but we asked for history of trauma if any that was there repetitive micro traumas. Also the patient did not have very comfortable footwear which he told this was also seen in his family that his other family members were also. Um, having this problem, but there was no as such history of drug usage or any other skin or other diseases. Also there was no history of diabetes, heart disease or any other debilitating disease, but the patient mainly gave um, history of problem to these nails that he was getting. Now on local examination, subungual hyperkeratosis was seen and onculysis, onculysis that is the nail was crumbling, yellow white in color the nail could be seen with yellow streaks and in the central portion especially and they which was thickened and opaque also and in some places it was crumbling or it was just falling off. The patient was malnourished, anemic, but as systemically he had no other abnormality. So, a laboratory processing was done that is the specimen was obtained from the nail bed, curettage was done from the affected nail bed and closest to the proximal or the lateral edges where the fungus is most active. And direct microscopy was done and under the KOH preparation that is uh, 20 percent KOH preparation was used, we could see hyphal structures. Also when we did nail and we did a pass staining or silver methylene staining, again we saw uh, fungal hyphal structures which are black and they were stained black and they were seen in the smear. On culture, on sabrodextrous agar, for, uh, uh, you needed to culture, see we uh, had sabrodextrous agar, two tubes we cultured at 37 and 20 degree centigrade and for up till 6 weeks we had to, 4 to 6 weeks we had to incubate, then we got growth on the subredextrous area which was white to start with went on to colored growth and finally went on to a reddish growth which was there. And when this this looked quite like trichophyton rubrum, but we made a microscopy and we got a very typical picture that is these small speckled microconidia and very few macroconidia which was seen and this was diagnosed as case of trichophyton rubrum and a combination of systemic and topical antifungal treatment was given for up till 6 months before the patient could be could get all right. Now, what are these trichophyton or what are these infections? These are dermatophytes which is a closely related group of filamentous fungi. They infect only superficial keratinized tissue that is skin, hair and nails. What is the characteristic of these dermatophytes? They obtain nourishment from keratin. This is seen in vivo, in vitro also that is in lab experiments and also in human beings we see that they can grow on keratin. They are potentially pathogenic to man and animals and they produce a variety of clinical conditions which are collectively known as dermatophytosis, tenia or ringworm. In the tenia is something which a layman uses or ringworm a layman uses, but they can uh, collectively be called under any of these names. Now, morphologically they are septate hyphae and they produce sexual spores which could be microconidia or macroconidia. We are telling you this because on the basis of this the diagnosis is made on seeing microscopy as to which fungus it is. So, classification one is based on morphology, three genera are identified depending on this morphology, depending on whether macroconidia are there, microconidia are there, and what kind of macro and microconidia are there, trichophyton gen species, microsporin species and epidermophyton species. Now, trichophyton infects hair, skin and nails, while microsporum infects hair and skin 
and epidermophyton infects skin and nails. Now, there are 25 species of trichophyton known, out of which trichophyton rubrum and mentigraphytes are the one which are most commonly seen. Many species of microsporum are known, microsporum gypsium, canis are the ones which are very commonly seen, while there is only one species of epidermophyton known, which is epidermophyton floccosum. Now, when you grow them, you see that on sabrodextrous agar or other media, the trichophyton produces powdery, waxy a colony with pigmentation. You might see colored colony in this case of trichophyton. While in the case of microsporum, cottony, velvety or powdery colony like this is produced. While in the case of epidermophyton, powdery greenish yellow colony is produced, which is seen. Now, these colonies, they do not straight away go on to this color. They might start as white uh, rough colonies and the ca character might change over the period of uh, time. But final, these characters are the ones which are commonly seen on the basis of which you can diagnose these cases. Next, you do a microscopy from this, that is you make a lactophenol cotton blue mount. And lactophenol cotton blue mount, we have told you earlier, in which the cotton blue stains while the other things they preserve the fungi. So, in the case of trichophyton, we see microconidia, there is small, small conidia that you see, they are abundantly present. And very few or scanty macroconidia there, cigar shaped, thin walled macroconidia, single or very scanty microconidia could be seen in trichophyton species. While in microsporum, the microconidia which were there abundant in trichophyton, they are absent. Now, they are scanty in micro microconidia, but predominantly you will see spindle shaped, large multicellular uh, macroconidia which are born singly. While in the case of epidermophyton, the microconidia are absolutely ab uh, 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 absent, that is you do not see them at all and you see abundant pear shaped or uh, grape like clusters of these macroconidia which are seen. So, on the basis of these microscopic appearances, you can identify these different genera on the basis of microscopy as well as on the basis of gross appearance of the colonies on the media. Further, in trichophyton, the hyphae might have certain special structures which I have told you earlier, which could be racket hyphae or they could be spiral hyphae like these or they could appear favic chandelier appearance they could have. While in the case of microsporin epidermophyton, these special appearances of fungi are not seen. So, that is again a picture by which one can diagnose these um, fungal infections. It is important to diagnose because different species have different sensitivity to antifungal agents. Also, we need to know which is the species which takes how long for uh, it to get treated. Now, trichophyton rubrum is the notorious species which is known to take a lot of time to get treated. It is resistant to many antifungal agents. So, that is why it is important to know as to which fungus it is for long term treatment of the patient. Also, the first I told you we could classify morphologically. Now, the another classification that is done of these dermatophyte infections is by clinical classification, which is depending on the area of the skin or which part of the body is involved. Tinea corporis, basically non hairy skin, it, it is involved. Barby, if bearded areas that is neck and face are involved. Capitis, if scalp is involved. Cruris, if groin is involved. Pedis, if foot is involved, it is also known as at least foot. Another classification is done based on hair infection because they cause infection of hair also. Ectothrix, when the arthrospores on sheath around the hair, they are seen outside. While endothrix, the arthrospores are seen inside the hair shaft. So, depending this is what you see under the microscope. In a KOH preparation, you will see if the arthrospores are inside or outside and accordingly you can diagnose these infections. Further, another classification is based on natural habitat, that is it could be geophilic species, zoophilic species or anthropophilic species. Now, geophilic you can understand grows in soil, that is it, it most often is the microsporum gypsium. Zoophilic is, that is they infect animals usually, but they can cause infection in human beings also, which are trichophyton varicosum, my, my, microsporum canis. Anthropophilic means that they infect man only. These are trichophyton rubrum, epidermophyton floccosum and there are a few others also. Now, what is the mode of infection? Now, in anthropophilic infections, from human to human transmission is there. That is either direct contact or through an infected object, you could get the fungus. In zoophilic species, obviously, there has to be a contact with the diseased animal. So, either it is a direct contact with animal or animal's hair, which could have fallen on furniture or clothes. When the animal is around you or you are you know, hugging the animal, that could cause infection. And geophilic species, usually you get from contaminated soil, that is your hands or your feet or your clothes get contaminated with the soil which has the fungi in it and that grows. Now, disease development basically depends on a few factors. Now, I told you normally a natural skin is intact skin is resistant to infection. 
Infection basically depends on either the inoculum, nature of inoculum that is what kind of fungus it is, if how virulent it is, size of the inoculum and also reactivity of the patients that is how um, you know susceptible the patient is because of its immune status. Predisposing factors could be to do poor hygiene, diabetes mellitus, circulatory failure due to any reason, maceration of creases and folds of skin if they remain moist and they are not clean then you know uh, inflammation occurs in those areas, the creases occur and they can be easy uh, modes of entry for the fungus. So, the pathogenicity if you want to understand, anthropophilic species mainly they remain in keratin layers. Now, they are the ones which are causing human infections, their metabolites do not cause any inflammation, there is no allergy, no immunity and if you do an intracutaneous reaction uh, and test with the trichophytin antigen, it will be negative. But since there is no inflammation, no uh, immunity, so the increased reinfection is there that is the patient has more chances of getting reinfection because of this. While in the case of zoophilic and geophilic species, what happens is the fungus lodges in the keratin and it is poorly adapted to human tissue. Now, what happens is when the fungus grows, there are metabolites produced. Now, these metabolites since they are in an immune, in a new environment, they produce inflammation. The human body does not recognize them as their own. So, it produces inflammation against them that is the human body is hypersensitive to it or it will produce a hypersensitivity reaction or it is immune to it. So, if you inject such a trichophytin antigen or such a fungal antigen intracutaneously, it will produce hypersensitivity that is another way of diagnosing these infections. Suppose you cannot grow this organism for long, you can do this test and come to know as to which species it could be. But since there is lot of immunity is all, the patient might get immune to it after the immune reaction and no in reinfection is usually seen in these cases and usually these cases they can get cured faster. Treatment basically comprises systemic or topical treatment, oral glucosophilin or itraconazole is given or you can get terbenafin, fluconazole, neutriazole, posaconazole are also available which can be given as orally or topical lotions usually depending if the disease is not much to start with you can start topical lotions, clotrimazole, tolmaphtate and other situation solutions are there. But many times you need to combine the two depending on the severity of the infection and then the treatment can extend up till 6 to 8 months depending on what kind of how much the lesion is there, how extensive the lesion is there. Also in addition to these dermatophyte infections which you see in skin, hair and nails, there are some infections which are known as dermatophytids or id reaction. Now, what are they? Depending on which fungus is causing the infection, they are called mycid, favid, trichophytid or epidermophytid. What is it? It is an allergic reaction usually. What does the patient present with? They present with sterile vesicles they on you know on the skin. So, seeing those vesicles you could think it is a viral infection, it could be anything. But when you see the patient might be having some dermatophyte or fungal infection somewhere else in the body, somewhere else far away from these vesicles, but he will be having some fungal infection in them. And this is what is important to be able to diagnose this case. So, it is an allergic reaction away from the site of infection dermatophytes and usually when you take from these vesicles pus or you know take out fluid from them, you cannot isolate any fungus. So, they are sterile vesicles that is what is important. So, they will not produce any other, uh, no other fung uh, iso uh, isolating agent is seen in them. Causative agent usually it is the fungus which is causing the primary lesion that is which dermatophyte which caused the primary lesion in skin of say in uh, you know shoulder or somewhere, but you are getting vesicles in the arms or you are getting in the legs. Usually it is because of the zoophilic or geophilic species which produce these because I told you they are the ones which produce immunity in the body or hypersensitivity. So, these reactions, these vesicles are a um, mode of presentation as a hypersensitivity only and what happens is the primary lesion which is there which is due to the fungus causes inflammation and the, the uh, dermatophyte is growing in there in that human lesion it is you know growing as well as it is being um, destroyed also due to the inflammatory reagents, inflammatory reactions which come up in the human body. So, certain antigen fraction or toxic metabolites are produced which sensitize the host and which leads on to these vesicle formation. So, clinical features would be signs and symptoms of a primary lesion of a dermatophyte infection along with that vesicle somewhere else far away from the site of lesion of the primary lesion. So, epidemiologically they occur spontaneously, they are seen in 5 to 6 percent of dermatophyte infections, most often primarily they are seen in children 5 to 12 years. They can very often get provoked by either over treatment or by inappropriate treatment, these vesicles or these id reaction is seen in those cases. Diagnosis therefore, following criterion must be followed that is you must have an existence of one or more lab confirmed primary foci, 
absence of fungus from the secondary lesion that is from the vesicle if you take out any fluid microscopically or by culture you cannot demonstrate any fungus in it. And also if you do a intracutaneous reaction in these cases it will be positive if you use a fungus which is uh, the incriminating fungus in the initial case. And most often they, res they resolve without treatment which is another way in which you can diagnose them even when you do not we are not able to diagnose they will go away on their own. Course and prognosis it is usually it is a good prognosis and treatment of primary lesions is what leads to the disappearance of these aids or vesicles. So, there is no specific treatment which is needed for these vesicles. So, um, basically I would like to say that we have seen here the superficial infections of skin which could be tinea's or uh, tinea's vesicular or uh, it could be tinea nigra or it could be hair infection again piedra white or piedra nigra and dermatophyte infections which could be cutaneous infections which is a presentation of cutaneous and these are the infections which comprise 70 to 80 percent of our uh, skin and OPD, skin OPD attendance. So, we should see that they are the ones which most often we come across in our skin uh, OPDs. I would like to say since these infections are so common you know first the clinical suspicion has to be there, the patient has to be thought of from that angle and only then you would think of doing a microscopy or you will think of doing a, a culture in those cases and very often you do not need to do a culture in uh, microscopy by seeing a typical picture a clinician is able to diagnose but the treatment is important because the incriminating agent is very different from any other uh, illnesses which could occur in the skin. Thank you, I think we will finish off at this. There are a few references to the figures that I have got and we will finish off at, at this stage.